Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and welcome to the ECS follow along. In order to uh, do this follow along, you have to do the Elastic Beanstalk one first, because in that follow along, we build out a web application and we turn it into a Docker image, and then we host it on ECR. And we are going to need this ECR Docker image in order to complete this follow along. So please go to that one first and do that follow along, and you definitely should. Um, and once you uh, have that done, come back here and we will proceed uh, forward. So before we can create our ECS cluster, we're going to need to create an IAM role for our, our EC2 instances. Um, and Anybus has documentation on this, the Amazon EC instance role. These instructions aren't very clear, but I know what to do, so let's follow along. So the first thing is we're going to want to name it this, ECS instant role. Well, you could name it anything you want, but let's just be um, consistent here as because this is what everybody else names it. We'll make our way over to IAM. On the left-hand side, you want to go to roles. We're going to create a new role. We're going to leave that here. Choose EC2, go next. And then what I want you to do is type in EC2 um, container. And we're looking container service role for EC2. It's this one here. I'm going to double check it, just make sure it it is what I'm, what I'm expecting it to be. I usually can tell what this stuff is by looking at the services. Yep, this is the one. We will go next. We'll hit next. We'll name that role. We'll create that role. And so now we have this role and we're ready to go create our cluster. So going back to our first tab here, I want you to make it over to ECS. So we'll click on that. On the left-hand side, we will choose cluster. We will create a cluster and we'll be presented with multiple options. It's defaulted to Fargate, which we'll be doing in the Fargate follow along, but right now we're doing ECS. And the way you know if it's ECS is that um, it's not powered by Fargate and you do not create an empty cluster. So we are gonna use Linux. So we'll hit next here. Uh, and if we checkbox this the here, this would make it Fargate, but that's not what we're doing. I'm gonna call this my ECS uh, cluster. We'll leave it as on demand. Spot is a really great way to save uh, money, but I, do, I just don't want anything to go wrong in this uh, follow along, so we'll just leave it as on demand. I want you to go look for uh, T2 Micro here because that's part of the free tier, and there I found it. We're gonna only have one instance. We wanna keep this very inexpensive. Amazon Linux 2 seems fine to me. We do not need to uh, set a key pair. We do not need to set any of the VPC settings here. And we need to make sure our ECS instance role is there and it automatically selected it. And then we can go ahead and hit create. And what's that gonna do? It's gonna create an ECS cluster. Uh, then it's going to make sure we have that IAM policy. And now we're just waiting for that CloudFormation stack to complete. So this won't take too long. Um, it's still pending right here. We're just waiting for the auto scaling group and the internet gateway. I think what I'll do is I'll just um, pause the video here. Oh, no, it looks like it's almost done. Maybe we'll just give it a second here. Oh, okay, it's proceeding forward. Um, now we're just waiting for the security group and the auto scaling group. Okay, great. Now we're just waiting for these last two here, the v uh, virtual private gateway and the auto scaling group. All right, now we're just waiting for the EC2 route. You can see that it sets up a lot of stuff to make this cluster. And that looks like it's done. It's still spinning though. I think this is pending here, the, the route table subnet association. So we're just waiting for the uh, route tables to set up and there we go. So let's go ahead and view your cluster. And um, what we need to do is we want to create a service, but before we can do that, we're going to need to create a task definition to actually launch. So go to task definitions, create a new task definition. We have the option between Fargate and EC2. We obviously want EC2, but that's for ECS. We hit next. I'm going to name this um, uh, study sync. We need to choose a task role, uh, optional IAM role that the task can use to make API requests to authorize AWS services create an, uh, one here. We might need one here for uh, using ECR. I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out as we go. Uh, we'll go down here and we'll have to specify some memory. Um, in order to do this, we need to know um, how much memory comes with um, a T, T2 micro. That is 500 megabytes. So that's the maximum we can do. 
And uh, with a T2 micro, you get one VPCU. So I'm gonna place that in there. Here you can set um, the CPU units, which I have no idea what to do for that. I don't know if one VC, uh, VCPU is 1024, probably is, but I definitely know there is only one v, uh, VCPU for, virtual CPU for um, T2s, T2 micros. So now that we're there, we'll go ahead and add our container. I'm gonna name this um, study sync container. And then we need to specify our image repo. So we'll go over to ECR. I'm gonna copy that, paste that there. Um, I think we want the latest. I think we can place the latest in here. And we'll set it to 256 megabytes. It's a Node.js app. It doesn't require a lot of memory. We want to map the port. So uh, 80 is the, is the port that goes to the internet. So that's what we want. And 8080 is what our container port is. That's what we start up our web application on. And we'll see that if, like you'll see that in the Elastic Beanstalk um, follow along that that's what we do. We are not gonna set up a health check. Um, we do need to set up some environment variables. We don't need to set an entry port or command. These are set in that build image. If we wanted to override them, we could place them in here. Same thing with working directory. But we're gonna need to set up the port here, which will be 8080, and then the node environment, which will be production. Then we'll go down here. There's some. There's a quite a few options here. Not super important. We'll keep on going. Uh, and yeah, that should be everything that we need. We'll hit add. I still don't know if we're going to run into an issue because I know that ECR requires authentication, and I don't know if it will pull it without that task rule. But I guess we'll find out. Uh, we have a lot of interesting options here for service integration. So app mesh, proxy configuration, log router with Fire lens. I don't even know what fire lens is. Sounds like a new service to me. Uh, we can add volumes, not necessary. Um, I do want to point out one thing. I, I can't, uh, or maybe I can click it here. I just didn't show it to you, but when you set environment variables, you can do value from, and this allows you to provide the ARN of a systems parameter store key. And that allows you to pull in secret parameters. So if you had secrets you wanted to put in there, you could definitely do that. I'm just going to know it might show up on the exam. We'll go ahead and hit create. Unable to create this task definition. It doesn't like something I've done. Uh, I'm just looking through it here. Looks okay to me. The only thing I can think of is it's because it doesn't have a task role, but it says optional IAM role. All right, so I tried going ahead and creating this task definition and I got this error and it's exactly what I thought it was. We just don't have permissions here. Um, and so I did a bit of Googling and I believe we are missing this ECS task uh, execution role. So here they have the instructions. Um, so we will go ahead and go ahead and create that. Um, so luckily we still have I am open here. I'm gonna create a new role. Um, I think we need to choose uh, ECS, so select trust entity, choose Elastic Container Service. What's interesting is that this would actually have been created for us if we had launched um, Amazon ECS console first run experience. So the first time you do it, it automatically creates it. But like, if I don't have anything to launch. I have to create that definition. It's like a catch 22. One of those things that I wish AWS would improve upon. I'm sure if I complain on Twitter, they will definitely do that. Um, but anyway, we'll just go ahead and manually do it because it's all about figuring stuff on your own here. Uh, and they might actually already have a pre-made one here, but we'll just go down here. Uh, select your use case, choose Elastic Container Service Task. Oh, there it is, okay. We'll hit next. And it should automatically add the policy, I guess not. Um, attach permissions policy. Sometimes when you select those pre-made ones, it automatically fills it in for you, but I guess not in this case. But that's the one we need. We'll hit next, we'll hit next. Let's name it what it suggests us to name it. Oops, there we go. Now we have our role, we'll scroll up, hit refresh, and there it is. And then we'll go down here. You're given permission to ECS to create and use the ECS. So here it's suggesting that it would have created it on our behalf, but it never did. All right, that's fine. We'll just hit create anyway. 
All right, I'm back here again. Sorry for all the hard cuts. I'm just having a really hard time with ECS. I made this follow along in my other AWS account. It worked perfectly the first time, and I'm just getting beat up at every single corner. And trust me, I go on Twitter and I literally complain to AWS about these things just because they are really painful. But I just want you to know that uh, even myself as being an AWS expert, I even have hard times getting through these follow along. So, you know, just stick with it if you have any issues. But anyway, I was able to create this um, task definition, and I have to create a revision here to show you uh, what was going on there. Uh, so I'm just going to hit Create Revision, and it has all the same uh, filled in information. And the only problem I had, we definitely probably had to create this task role. We should have made it anyway. Uh, but we needed to click on here, and I had Latest on the end of here, which I had, I thought, prior, but I guess it doesn't allow you to do it. So just remove Latest on the end of, on, end of here, and then you'll be able to create this task definition. And also in this box uh, here, I wasn't carefully reading it, but it was actually saying that it would have created this for us anyway. So if we left this blank and we removed that latest there and created it, it would, we would have had that role. But anyway, uh, we, made, we made it through there. So just go ahead and hit create and you should be exactly where I am with the uh, task definition. So now that we have our task def definition, I'm definitely gonna close uh, these things here because uh, we have a lot of tabs open. Uh, I'm just going to keep on going here, all the way here. Uh, we are ready to launch uh, this um, this task. So we'll go over to clusters. Oops, I clicked EKS. Definitely not doing Kubernetes today. We'll go to clusters here. We'll click on my ECS cluster. And we have services and tasks. So services continuously run, tasks end as soon as the task is done. Since this is a web application, we definitely want to make it a service. So we'll hit create here. We want it to be EC2 because that's for ECS. We're not making a Fargate type. Uh, we'll leave that name alone. That's totally fine. We'll name the service. I'm just going to call it my service. Very unoriginal. We're going to leave it as a replica. We want one task running here. Uh, we'll leave it as rolling update. That seems fine to me. Uh, AZ balance spread seems fine to me. I don't play around with these too much. Um, we'll go ahead and hit next. And then it's going to ask us what load balancer we want to use. We don't want one. We want to save money. Obviously, it's recommended to use a load balancer and and uh, have things in an auto scaling group. But uh, you know, we just want to be able to launch an, um, a, a service. That's all that we really need to learn here. And we'll scroll down. We have a lot of options. You don't, we don't need to read any of this. We'll hit next. Then we have service auto scaling. This would add an auto scaling group. We do not need one, so we'll hit next. And then we will create the service. So this should actually be very fast. So when you launch an EC2 instance, it takes forever, right? Because you have to wait for it to create one, but there's already one running. All it has to do is um, put that task uh, in there. So we just have to wait a little bit. Um, this will take a little bit of time here the first time around, but I'm pretty sure that when we launch um, a, um, tasks after this initial setup here, it's really, really fast. So. We'll just wait here a little bit and I'll see you back in a moment. And that was actually really fast. I did not even have to stop the video, but I did. So um, so now this is started, we can go check out that uh, my service. But I'm gonna click the big blue button down below. Uh, and here we can see our task is running and it's running uh, study sync colon one. So version one, um, yep, that version is fine. And we'll click into task because we only actually have one version. And in here, what we can do is we can see the container instance. So if we click into that, it's going to give us information such as the public IP address and etc. I think if we click into the task here, and we drop down here, I know we just went backwards, but it actually shows us port 80 and 8080. And we just have this convenient link to get to it. There's tons of ways to get this link. And we can see our application is running. So version three was the one we had last in Elastic Beanstalk. So that's all it takes to um, run an ECS task. Now there's obviously a lot of options in ECS, uh, not important for this follow along, uh, but definitely, you know, read through all the lecture content. If you are doing the DevOps, um, you definitely know need, need, need to know all those options. So way longer follow along with ECS uh, for that. But for the developer associate, all we need to know is how to launch that service. Um, now this cluster costs money because it is an EC2 instance that is uh, constantly running. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it. So we'll just type in delete me. And uh, it takes a little bit of time here. And once that's deleted, uh, we'll be in good shape. 
Um, I'm not going to wait around for this video to see this delete. It's deleting. I know it will happen. Um, but yeah, once this is done, that means we can move on to the Fargate uh, follow on, which is very similar, except there is no EC2 instance running. So that's super exciting because it's a serverless container. So we'll see you then.